Hey everybody, today we're going to tackle my favorite kind of race car. It's going to be a lot of fun, so don't go away. Hey gang, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we're going to be tackling a funny car. Now, new modern day funny cars are fine, but I'm really, you know, I have always been and am enamored with the old school funny cars, the cars that looked like cars. These modern day funny cars, they don't really look anything like cars. So today we're going to be tackling a mongoose. And this is a, uh, I guess we could call it a consignment. It's uh, for a viewer who lives in Las Vegas and had a bunch of cars for me. And I wanted to say thank you in a special way. So I said, hey, bring something to me that I can build for you. And that's going to be this Hot Wheels Redline Mongoose. So let's go ahead and get right to it. So yeah, I, I really do dig uh, old school funny cars. So the snake and mongoose are, are real big with me. And you know, I grew up right in the middle of all of that stuff. So yeah, this is going to be a fun restoration for me. And the, the biggest downside of the entire project is that no matter how good it comes out, I have to give this away when I'm done, and that's going to really be a bummer, but hey, let's have fun with it until then. So, uh, fortunately, this car has everything it's supposed to have. It's got the little plastic uh, insert for the front and the, the driver's cage for the back. Uh, it's got its glass, you know. It's really actually in pretty solid condition. It just looks like a really old toy that's been loved and played with a lot. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get this sucker apart, and we're going to see if we can't make it look like it's brand spanking new. Okay, here you can see the front plastic insert. This thing is usually missing, and that's all it really is, is mainly the ladder that holds the, uh, the body up, so you can see underneath the, uh, the body to see the engine and the driver's compartment. And then in the back of the car, we have another little plastic insert that is not always missing, but it's not uncommon for it not to be there, and that's the little driver's cage. It's a, an unusual little arrangement. It's all print it out all flat and then you kind of have to fold it up um, and it ends up making this little piece uh, you know a definitely clever little design um, I'm glad that it's still there under the hood we have the motor which is going to provide the one post that is holding um, the suspension system in place I really hate uh, engine post deals it, they're just a real pain. I'm not a fan of them, but hey, it is what it is, and there's no getting around it. We're going to have to drill out the post, so let's do that and get this car apart the rest of the way. So once we've drilled off the mushroom, we can go ahead and get a little helper uh, in the form of a small flathead screwdriver and we'll just kind of wedge it between the body and the motor and pop that motor off and uh, you can see it's in, it's in fine shape it needs a little cleaning up and there's that one little post really don't like that but hey it is what it is and then inside that uh, motor and post was holding on the little suspension board which holds on the straight axles uh, that go to the capped wheels and it's all actually in pretty good shape it's gonna get new wheels anyhow from bright vision but uh, you know hey it's still in pretty good shape for as old as this car is
with uh, no interior to hold the glass in like in normal Hot Wheels, uh, Mattel needed to find a way to hold the window in and so what they did is they put a little tab in the back window and frankly it made it really tough to get this glass out especially if you're trying to do it without breaking it. It's going to be just as difficult to put it back in but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. As to the body and the base, they're both in pretty solid condition. The hinge is great and uh, we're definitely not going to take that apart. I would recommend never, ever taking hinges apart uh, uh, unless it's damaged to the point where you have no choice. So we're going to just leave it together and we'll take it and give it a bath in the warm liquid goo. I tried brushing on the stripper for a while, but I found it, it's just so much easier to drop it into a warm liquid goo vat like this. I can cover it up, put it to the side, not worry about it until I'm ready to move on. Okay, I left this in for a couple days. Didn't really need to, especially because this was the old style stripper. But, uh, you know, I, I like to be able to just drop it in there and forget it and come back whenever I'm ready. Uh, so now I just need to kind of fish this thing out of there and see what we have. And then we'll hit it up with a toothbrush and kind of slurm off the rest of the, the paint and the, the stripper. And then we'll go give it a good bath and some nice warm water and see what we have. Yeah, all the paint has come loose. I just need to knock it off. And you see most of it just fell right off. I'm just really using the brush to just kind of get rid of any last little uh, bits that are just kind of mainly stuck onto the body by the suction power of the goo. So I'm just going to kind of knock that all off, and then we'll go wash it. And after we wash it, um, we get a chance to really examine the car and see what we have. So this is a great chance to look for imperfections, casting lines that you want to deal with, or any other things that, that might get in your way of your restorations. So don't just be, you know, drying it off and, and sitting out in outer space somewhere. You know, be focused and pay attention to what you have. Uh, you know, that way you can identify any problem areas. Oh, maybe I'm a creature of habit. Uh, this is going to get an opaque paint job, so I don't really need to go too crazy with the body. But I cannot help but hit this up with my brass bristle brush. It's just part of my routine, and I'm comfortable with it. So even though, like I say, it's going to get an opaque red paint job, it, you know, it, I'm still going to follow my, my path that I normally follow. Uh, just really for my own comfort and, uh, you know, make me feel like I'm doing it the right way. So as I was doing that, I was able to identify uh, three pretty bad spots. One right here on the, uh, the uh, cowl, I guess we'll call it. Uh, you can see there's like a, a really bad casting mark in that, which what a rotten place for that. So we're going to have to deal with that. I also found uh, some ugly casting lines on the uh, sail panels on both sides of the car. Um, and so now I'm just kind of going around picking uh, any residual paint out of the grooves and looking for anything else that I've missed. But uh, now it's time to go ahead and break out a, a small file and then I can go ahead and get rid of... Look at that. That's, that's ridiculous. Why would the... What were they thinking? I, I can't even imagine it because that is such a prominent place of the car. I, I don't even know why there was anything there at all. But it is there and it's got to go.
So after I'm done sanding and filing away all the marks that I identified earlier, uh, I'll give this car a final bath, wipe it down with a little alcohol, and then I can get ready to uh, paint it. And to do that, I'm going to just use a little Tamiya masking tape, and I'm going to tape off the base. Um, it needs to remain silver. I, I don't want to get any paint on it. I can't take it off. So there's really no option here. But you'd be surprised how tight the hinge you can get with the tape. Uh, it really is going to come out fine. And basically, uh, I, after getting the back right by the hinge taped off, I can just kind of wrap away and, and we'll be good to go. Is she asleep out there? Huh? Nothing. I know. Okay, so once I have that all taped up and sealed up, I'll go ahead and get it into a uh, a pair of locking forceps and take it on over to the paint booth. Okay, so it is painting time. And I'm just going to use a little bit of Tamiya red paint, gloss red paint. And as always, when I'm using Tamiya paints, I will thin that down with a little X20 thinner and I will add some Mr. Color leveling thinner to help make sure that the paint will flow out and be very, very smooth. Uh, doing it this way, you can really get a very beautiful, smooth finish with this Tamiya paint. Now, that's not going to stop me from uh, doing my favorite thing, which is clear coating. But, you know, I probably could get away without it and have on many Matchbox products. One important thing to remember is if you're going to use the leveling thinner in any of your paints, basically what the leveling thinner does is it slows down the drying process, which means you might normally think that the car would be dry and ready to handle at a certain point. It might not in this case. It's going to slow down the drying process so that the paint has time to flow out and flatten out and become very nice and smooth. So, you know, it's it's a, a trade-off. Do you want a nice smooth finish or do you want to be done in a hurry? You know, I, I know the answer for me. I want a nice smooth finish, so I always use the leveling thinner. All right, so with the paint loaded up in the cup of my airbrush, I can go ahead and follow my normal routine for putting the paint down. Uh, I always begin by putting down just a nice tack coat, uh, making sure that I get just the faintest bit of color on there uh, and give the paint something to, to grip to the body with. So I'll put down the mist coat, let that dry for a few minutes, and then I can come back and start to build up my color using my medium coats, and then once I'm right before the final color where I want to be, then I will start to lay down my wet coats. it will bring it to its final color and give me a beautiful smooth finish. So now you can see the red really starting to take hold as I get near the end of the paint job. And aside from the fact that I want my car to look fabulous with a great paint job 
having a great smooth paint job at this level is going to enable me to put the decals on and they're really going to lay down beautifully. If you have a, you know, a texture or a roughness or an uneven paint job and then you go to put the decals on, it could lead to trouble. So, you know, it's worth putting this paint job down really nice at this stage, even though I fully intend to clear coat it after the decals. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've promised to tell you more about decaling, and I'm, I'm going to be working on that very, very soon. Uh, but as far as this car goes, I had already ordered um, a set of decals on eBay for this car. So I'm just going to use those. And basically, it's the same old spiel. You know, you, you soak them in water until they soften and release from the backing paper. And then you slide them off onto the car, which you have moistened with a little bit of water. Now you have a micro set, which you can use in case you're having trouble with the decal sticking to the surface. And then you have micro saw that you can use in case you need the decal to soften, to settle down into um, body lines or, or unique contours of the car you're working on. Uh, in this case, I'm not using any setting solution. I'm just using a little bit of Walther's uh, uh, solvent to make sure that the decal will settle down and, and flow with the body lines. This car has uh, some fairly large decals on it, and those decals can hold some water. They can have water underneath them. So just like it's important that you make sure that your paint job is thoroughly dry before you move forward, it's also just as important to make sure that the decals are thoroughly dry before you go back to the paint booth and seal them in with your clear coat. If you don't do that, the, the moisture underneath is going to come up out through that clear coat and you're going to get bubbles and other anomalies and it's essentially going to ruin the entire show. So really, after you get this decaling done, don't be in such a hurry to get right back to the paint booth. Make sure that this thing is fully, fully dry before you go ahead and lay down your clear. Okay, that is looking really, really great. I'm very happy with it, so we'll put it aside to dry. After it's dry, we'll head back to the paint booth and we will lay down some uh, urethane clear coat from Bright Vision, and it's going to really just make this thing beautiful. Okay, so while that's drying, we can go ahead and turn our attention to that piece of glass. Now, like I said, the piece of glass, uh, other than being a pain to get out and eventually is going to be a pain to get back in, it's not in the worst shape in the world. It had a little, uh, I, I, I can't really tell if it's a crack or a gouge in it, but it was a little too too much to, to deal with, um, but not enough to replace the whole thing. So I cleaned this really, really well, and we're going to take it for a swim in the gauzy and hope that it comes out great. So quick dip, then over to the paper towel to wick off the excess, and then into my beloved onion saver so that it can dry peacefully, happily, 
and dust free. Yeah, I really actually do love my onion saver. And there's a link down below for it. Uh, it's really, really cheap. It's like 4 or $5 on Amazon. So if you don't have one, make sure you go ahead and get one. It, it really is fantastic at keeping your, your uh, parts dust-free while you move on to other things. Okay, so now I can do a little bit of paint work while uh, everything is drying. And the first thing I want to address is the suspension board. This is, uh, you know, age yellowed and ugly, and yet it shows in the finished model. So I cannot abide that. So we're going to take a little bit of uh, Tamiya XF1, which is flat black, and we're just going to quickly brush paint that on there. Uh, it's not a real big deal. You don't have to go crazy with this paint job um, because there's so much stuff sitting on top of it, like the engine and the, uh, the driver's cage and the... Uh, the, the front ladder and all that, you know, but I, I just couldn't have that ugly yellow plastic showing through. So we're going to throw this paint on here just to kind of bury it and hide it down into the body, you know, so that when the top is up, you know, you don't really see this thing. So once I'm done with the suspension board, I can put that aside to dry, and then I can take a look over here at the engine. Um, the engine needed just a little sprucing up, so really it didn't need much. So I just decided I would hit it up with my brass bristle brush, and that should give it more than enough shine and, and give it a little bit of authenticity. And then I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of painting on it, I'm going to put a little black in the uh, opening to the blower and uh, into the valve covers, the, the little black grommets where the spark plug wires would go through. I'm going to paint those in and I'm going to paint the, uh, the distributor cap red in the back. And uh, that should just give the, the motor a little bit more realism and uh, really dress up underneath the uh, body. You know, a lot of times when I'm wearing my, my magnifying visor, I, I joke about getting old sucks and stuff like that. Uh, but honestly, I think anybody out there can benefit from a good visor. I actually have two of them. This one I use for my general purpose stuff, but for really, really super detailed stuff, uh, I have one that has uh, changeable lenses and can really, really get you right up into the action. So uh, it, I highly recommend these for anybody when you're doing detail painting and little things like that. It makes the job go so much better and so much easier. And of course, as always, there's links down below for these things. Okay, with everything dry and the driver's cage and the front ladder all cleaned and everything else ready to go, I think it's time to start putting this thing together. So we'll go ahead and start by laying in the uh, suspension board and then we'll push the, uh, the engine's post through the hole and we'll get a little button head screw and we'll just screw that sucker in there and that will bring together the motor and the base and the wheels and suspension and get that all ready. Wow. 
with the engine screwed back into the base and ready to go now we can just take the uh, the interior and the front plastic piece and they just basically snap in they got two little arms with hooks on them you hook uh, one hook in over one side and then just kind of pop it on and you're in business I wish the uh, windshield would go in as easily as these two parts did uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a fight. You kind of have to have it just in the perfect position, and then you got to kind of get that back window to snap in around that little uh, post. And it's not the easiest thing in the world, especially when you're trying to keep the uh, the, the glass looking uh, brand spanking new. But eventually, and with a little patience, you can get it in there, and then you're pretty much done. So we can go ahead now and just take a look at the finished product and see what we've come up with. I hope you like it. All right, so there you have it, the mongoose. Back in the day when funny cars were funny cars and they looked like cars that ran like hell. And these things just would beat ass down the track. It was uh, uh, an amazing day of racing, you know. I, I, I just love these cars, and it was really fun to do this one. So I really had a good time, and I hope my uh, viewer really loves this car when I put it into his hands. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the little bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you the most amazing, high-speed, high-energy, high-octane kind of day. And until next time, be good.